Today's your birthday. What birthday is it? Oh, I can't believe that I'm, ma I'm making 73 years, and they were wonderful years. <laughs> I had so much in my life that I've been so happy for. I have lovely children, lovely grandchildren, and they're all so smart. And uh, all I can say is thank God for my life. Well, tell us about your mother and father. Now, who were they? Well, my mother was Helena from Poland, and she came when she was 14 years old to this country, could not speak a word of English, and she had to live in a boarding house with people because in those days they didn't have relatives, and she came with her brother Stanley, who was 17, and he became a butcher in Passaic, and my mother worked okay. in a handkerchief factory, and I guess the uh, Today, my grandchildren would laugh at the money that she made. My father used to tell me he made 65 cents a day. <laughs> a day. <laughs> and I used to think my father wasn't <laughs> like all there. But in those days, you know, bread was only like about 8 cents a loaf. Butter was about 15 cents a pound. You could go out to a restaurant for maybe 25 cents, and if you were lucky to go to a restaurant. That's so funny too. And uh, then my mother met my father when they were 19, and they got married. And uh, did they have a big wedding? Of course not. My father didn't even have a job, Jean. Uh, they were poor. And he went all the way to Bridgeport, Connecticut, to try to find a job. As a matter of fact, this past week, my mother and father would have been married 76 wonderful years. And they had a, a little boy before me, whose name was William, but he died at birth. And uh, then I have a sister, Grace. and. Uh, then from then on in, I was very, very proud that my mother sent me to Catholic school, which the tuition was $2 a year. <laughs> when That's I so hear that my granddaughters are, I don't know how much, is it 3000 a year for grammar school? And, you know, my mother was very proud of me because though she couldn't, you know, she had to learn English, she had to That's learn me. to read and write. But in my day, I graduated first highest in class standing in the, from the eighth grade. And in those days, you received a book for best in spelling, best in catechism, you know, if you were. And I was. And my mother was very proud of it. And if you want to hear my first speech on the stage when I was four, oh, I started school at four years old. We did not have kindergarten. We went right into the first grade, and I must have been pretty smart. And we'd have plays the way you do, Mary and Anne, at Christmas. And my first speech was, some folks may think me much too small to speak a piece before you all, but I can say, so all can hear, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> and now I'm an old lady, but I still remember that. And then I went on to high school. We moved to Brooklyn, and I went to Erasmus Hall High School, where a lot of celebrities like Eleanor Holmes, the swimmer, and uh, um, Rita Hayworth, and all of those actresses graduated. And then when I was 16 years old, my father got me a job in a real estate office. And I met a nice boy whose name was Andy. And he was very nice. He was a little older than me. And we would go to Jones's <coughs> Beach to the operettas. And then when I was 17, I graduated high school. And my father got me a job in the Prudential, in the Woolworth Building, which was then the second largest building in the world. Well, <clears throat> uh -oh. what, what I did was I uh, had to be interviewed. And in those days, uh, 
they would, uh, the personnel manager would ask me if I had sisters or brothers, because they would never hire anybody that was spoiled. And he ho told me that he hoped I wouldn't be too disappointed in the salary, because it was only $65 a month. <laughs> and at that time, my girlfriend, who was a private secretary, was only getting $8 a week, so I felt very, very happy. And then I met some nice girls that I worked with, and then when I became 18, I met Grandpa, whose name was Jack Burke, and he was from Orange. And he would have to come on the uh, Lackawanna Railroad every day. And he was like sort of a semi-boss. He would check my work, and he was always very nice to me. And he, um, well, I guess he kind of liked me, and I used to tell him there were such pretty girls there. Why didn't he, you know? <laughs> so then I learned the switchboard on my lunch hour, and then I was to become, that was going to be my career later on in life after I got married to Grandpa, oh, the war was on, we got married, he came back safely, um, then I had, Jean was my first little baby, and then we moved all the way to Chicago, Illinois, and if you could have ever seen us with uh, all this luggage and uh, the crib, the <laughs> carriage, which collapsed, we looked like a bunch of gypsies at a caravan. And then we'd have to stop to heat <laughs> Jeannie's <laughs> bottle up because Jeannie was laying in a little bed in the back, and we'd have to stop at a restaurant to heat her bottle up. <laughs> and then, of course, um, Grandpa always was so fussy about Jeannie birthing and everything. We stayed at many nice <laughs> hotels, and then my sister was living in Wisconsin. We'd go visit her. And then when it came time, I was supposed to have Johnny. And we I will never forget it because Jean was so cute on the plane. And all she did the whole time was untie her shoelaces, and then I would put her shoelaces back and she'd tie them up. And then I came home and I found out I was going to have twins, which I didn't know. And then uh, Grandpa was away in, uh, uh, I guess it was uh, Indiana, and he drove all night when he found out I had the twins. And uh, we had a little girl, Virginia, Mary, and John. And John was alive and Virginia, God took her. And uh, after that, we came, Daddy got a transfer, Grandpa got a transfer because, you know, we couldn't travel anymore with the children. So he got stationed in uh, the Prudential in Newark, and then we bought a house, and the house was, oh, that was our first house. There were all woods there, and uh, then we um, had Christine. And Christine was a little redhead that was so sweet. And uh, well, then she, they all grew up and they went to Catholic school. And then when Jean was about 14, I decided that I would pursue a career. <laughs> and Jean and I found this uh, ad in the local paper for a switchboard operator. And I was never a switchboard operator, but I used to watch this girl that I worked with, and she showed me how to do it. And Jean and I went, and I had my interview, and Jean said, I hope you get it, Mom. And I said, I hope I don't, because I don't know what I'd be doing. <laughs> and when I got there, they had interviewed several girls, and when I came home, the telephone rang and said I had the job, and I went in. And they told me not to be too disappointed in the salary because, oh no, I'd be getting a more of a salary because I'd be first working on weekends, $1.75 an hour. Now Mary today, I think, makes, <laughs> I don't know how much. <laughs> but anyway, and then, <laughs> then after that, I worked there for 29 years. I learned everything I could possibly learn. I would have even scrubbed the floors. I love that place. And then um, 
I'm try just trying to think. I, I guess I stayed. I was the longest staying employee there.